Hey everyone, I hope you guys are all doing well. In this video, I will be showing you guys how you can inject Wii games through the Wii U Virtual Console. Now, there's a few reasons why you'd prefer to do this over using a loader such as Wii Flow. Firstly, it's just a lot easier to access. Pretty much, as soon as your Wii U is in custom firmware, you can just boot these games directly from your Wii U menu, and there's no need to go into Wii mode. Additionally, this does provide some extra features such as being able to use the gamepad as a classing controller or to emulate a Wii Remote, but I'll be getting into that more later on. Also, guys, thank you guys so much for 200 YouTube subs. I really appreciate it. That's insane. I am very, very happy with the growth that I've had on my YouTube channel. This is most likely going to be the finale in this series of videos. However, someone did request that I show off the MSX, part of the injector and I don't mind making a separate video on that if people want to see it. Also I saw that in my YouTube dashboard that I got an achievement of a thousand hours of watch time and that's just insane. Thank you guys so much for that as well. I really hope that I can work harder on this YouTube channel and continue to be consistent and try to get out at least two videos a month for you guys. Alright so before we do get into the actual injection you're going to need a few prerequisites. Firstly, you're going to need Ultimate Wii U Virtual Console Installer on your Wii U, and you're also going to need custom firmware as well. I have a setup tutorial on this, so definitely make sure to check that out. The link will be down in the description. I also have a whole entire playlist of all the other consoles before the Wii, essentially. If you need help getting custom firmware on your Wii U, make sure to check Wii U.guide out, and it should have the most recent and up-to-date version of custom firmware on there. Also, a few other things that I wanted to know. The program did have a large update, so if you find that you go through in my previous videos and some menus or things like that have changed, just keep in mind that the mechanically the program is still very similar in how it runs. So those videos are still good. I don't really see the point of going back and remaking them if only small changes were made. Also, as of making this video, there is an update on the Wii U. If you guys have custom firmware on your Wii U, as long as you uninstall it, I think it's completely safe to update. I just haven't gone ahead and updated my Wii U at this point. I also heard that there was one out for the 3DS. I haven't updated my 3DS consoles yet, but I've heard it's safe, but they tried to patch one exploit essentially. I think the reason for the Wii U update, from what I read at least, is because they needed to change some stuff related to COPA laws in the Nintendo Network ID setup, so just wanted to point that out. Alright, now with all of that out of the way, you're going to want to launch Ultimate Wii U Virtual Console Injector on your PC. Also, I did want to point out, at the time of making this guide, I am on 3.99.1. I heard of some issues on 3.99.0, so just keep that in mind if you're having issues, then you want to upgrade to this version. Once you're on the home screen, you're going to just want to select the Wii tab over here. And the first thing it's obviously going to ask you for, as is redundant in these videos, is for a base. For pretty much, I think, 95% of games on the Wii Virtual Console, Rhythm Heaven Fever will work out for you. So you're going to want to click on that. And it's also most likely going to ask you for the title key. You can find this on titlekeys.ovh, however I will not be providing it because it is technically copyrighted content. But after you get that entered, you're just going to want to click the download button right here. Alright, so now that the base is downloaded, you can see that in configuration, in terms of the Wii, we actually have a lot more options than usual. First thing you can see here is video patches. So I recommend, for the most part, that all of your ROMs that you use are the same as the region of your Wii U. However, over here, you'll be able to essentially convert the video over, but it does note that it might not work in every game. If you're also using another region, you're going to want to click on region patches as well, and essentially whatever your ROM file is, you're just going to want to convert that over. And in terms of extras, JP patch basically means allowing to play JP Wii games on non- JP consoles. So if you're converting over from any region, make sure that you select this stuff. That is very important because Wii Mode will detect for that sort of stuff in terms of what region the game is that you're using. But since the ROM that I'll be showing off today will be an NTSC ROM, I won't be actually messing around with any of the region or video patches. After your region has been configured to your liking, you're going to want to select your ROM. 
After you select your ROM, you might be asked a few things. So, there's an additional boot sound file available for download. Do you want to download it? I'm actually going to be clicking no for today, but you can download this. I'm assuming this would just be what the banner icon music is. And if the game that you're injecting is pretty common, it will actually ask you for the boot images. It's really awesome that the community has put these together, so I'm actually going to be using this. I did want to know, in terms of ROMs, you can actually use all the different formats for a Wii ROM. You can also inject Wii Homebrew apps, and you can even inject Wii channels. However, there are a few things that I would like to note. Firstly, if you did a Wii system transfer or own the game on disk, your data will be carried over. It will not be separate for this specific game. All of the Wii games create saves on the Wii partition of your system memory. Another thing I did want to note is basically because of how this virtual console works, several iOS's are disabled on your Wii. This means even if you have a patched version of Mario Kart Wii and you have that ROM, you will not be able to go online. It will still give you an error. So patch ROMs and online play will not work together if you're using an injector. Also, some specific instances may crash. One I would like to note specifically that happened to me is when I tried to install the Mario Kart channel through the Wii Virtual Console. And I think the reason for that is because you need to be in Wii mode itself for it to be able to install properly. Also, if you're going ahead and you're injecting a Wii channel, that needs to be on your system memory. It cannot be on an SD card. It will not work. It will error out on you if you try to do that. And if you're trying to use any reconnect 24 services those will not work either as you actually need to go ahead and enable the channel for reconnect 24 to work every time you go into Wii mode also i did want to note that some applications such as Wii Me maker and Wii shop channel do not work i tested them and they always give me an error so some of them might not work essentially what i have as Wii channels on my wii u are both the save game manager gx which i do plan to make a video on in the future and also the homebrew channel. But that was very important information to note, so I definitely wanted to make sure that I had a part of the video where I talked about that. Next over here, you'll be able to see that you can use the gamepad as. So you can select all these different options. You can use it as a classic controller, which could be nice for some specific games such as Mario Kart Wii. You can use it as a horizontal Wii remote or a vertical Wii remote. However, one thing I would like to note is I'm pretty sure motion does not work if you select horizontal or vertical Wii remote. You can also force classic controller or force no classic controller. So forcing the classic controller would mean that every time that you launch the game, it will force you to have the gamepad. I'm pretty sure force no classic controller is similar to do not use Wii remotes only, but I might be wrong. But for the sake of this guide, and also because Wii Sports is a completely motion based game, I will be using do not use Wii remotes only. But these are some really really nice options, and I know a lot of people really wanted it to be possible to use the gamepad as a classic controller or a horizontal or vertical Wiimote when Nintendo was first initially developing the Wii menu, but it's still cool that this injector supports that. The injector did ask me if I wanted to use a boot sound, but I just like to not use any of these because I like them to blend in with all my other virtual console games. But you can definitely add these if you want to. I did want to show off that this program has some really really cool templates that you can use. You can have the Wii style, the WiiWare style if you're trying to inject a lad, homebrew style which is cool, and a completely fresh template that I think the modding community made themselves. After you're happy with how all of these things are configured, you can finally set the game name, so I'm just going to be setting it to Wii Sports. And the reason I think it's called that is because I think when the Wii was initially being developed, they were going to call it the Nintendo Revolution. So it's cool that that name stuck in the game's code. It will read this directly from the ISO or WBFS file that you choose. After you have the game name set, one last thing that you're going to want to do is get the Wii U and cast key. You can simply read this from the otp.bin file that your Wii U creates if you make a NAND backup, or you can always look it up. So personally, I actually used my otp.bin. Sorry for the blur, but uh, I'm not trying to get my YouTube account in trouble. And after that, you can just click the inject button. And it's going to say that it's setting up C2W, so let it do that. And then after that, you're going to just want to pack this as a WAP installable. So after that, you're just going to want to click on Open Folder. Make sure that you have the, your SD card inserted in your PC. 
and simply just copy this and paste it into the install folder on your SD card. After it's done copying, I will see you guys over on my Wii U. On your Wii U, you're going to want to insert your SD card and launch Web Installer GX2. Once you're in Web Installer GX2, all you're going to want to do is click on your Web Installable package and click on Install. And you're going to want to install this on your USB. If you really want it in your system memory, always put it on the USB first and then move it over to your system memory. Also, I do think some of you guys were saying that you're having trouble with installing stuff. Make sure there's no special characters, even though I know the injector does check for that. But make sure that there aren't any special characters in the web package. And make sure that your Wii U is also in custom firmware before you install. After that, you're simply going to want to exit out. And go on over and you should see your inject right here. So click on it. And then when it asks you for a display option, this is display only, unless you selected any of the options that force the classic controller or rear remote on the gamepad. But for the sake of this, I'll just select TV and gamepad. Alright, so once you get into the game, you can just press A on your remote. And everything should work as intended, pretty much. So yeah, that's pretty much how you inject Wii games through the Wii U Virtual Console. I hope this guide was helpful for you guys. If it was, definitely make sure to follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash datazemnus. I'm live 7pm EST from Thursdays to Sundays, and I stream a whole bunch of stuff. Anything ranging from Kingdom Hearts speedruns to Nintendo games. So make sure to check that out. I also do have a Discord server, discord.io slash zemnus. If you ever have any questions or just want to hang out there, definitely make sure to join. As always, make sure to like the video if it helped out and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I definitely want to shift the focus on my YouTube channel, the Nintendo guides and Nintendo modding. And of course, if you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment. I'm always responding to those. No matter how old the guide is, I will always continue to respond to the comments. This might be the finale of this series, but I might consider doing some stuff such as MSX injections. But don't worry, I have plenty of topics I would like to cover in terms of Wii U and 3DS modding. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and your continued support, and I'll see you guys all later.